Hello YouTube. So I have a new project that I want to work on today and uh, uh, basically I'm living in an apartment now and we have a speaker system. And the speaker system has one audio input and right now it's connected to a Bluetooth. Here, let's, let's, let's draw this. So right now we have this Bluetooth receiver. And that uh, and that's connected to an Amazon Alexa. So so that's the receiver for the for the Echo. And don't worry too much about that. Basically, we have a Bluetooth receiver. Then we also have a TV. And we have the speakers. So, uh, my goal here is to connect both of these to the speakers and be able to switch between them. Now, they make audio boxes that do this, but I wanted something that's Arduino controlled so I can connect it to a home automation system and just tell Alexa, hey, switch the audio over to Bluetooth or switch it to TV. So, we're going to build some kind of black box here. Uh, this basically represents something that we don't know the implementation of, but we want to know what its function will be. So it'll have an output that goes to the speakers, and that'll be 3.5 millimeter Bisglay headphone jack. Then the TV will be RCA to 3.5 millimeter. And the Bluetooth will be 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter. And then this black box will be able to switch the audio signal from one source to the other. Now of course you could do this with relays, but that seems a little bit overkill for what I'm trying to do. I'd like to try to find a chip that can do this. So, uh, enter the, let's see, what is it? It's the CD4066B. And that's a CMOS quad bilateral switch. Uh, this guy right here. If you can see that. Oh, I have to adjust the focus. There. There he is. Okay. So. Uh, the first thing's first, though. I'm not going to finish this project today, but I just wanted to do some tests. Basically, I want to see if this thing will actually pass an audio signal through it, or if I have to find a different chip. So let's get that put in here. And I, I made up these things. I have another one here to show you. Basically, these are just 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks, and I have some leads soldered onto it so I can pop it into the breadboard really easily. Uh, once this project is done, of course, I'll put it on a proto board. Also, sorry that the camera is so wobbly. Uh, I have it mounted on a light right now, and it's probably not ideal. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to mount the camera. It's always kind of difficult. So anyway, let's go ahead and get to testing this. I'll go ahead and wire it up and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I've gone ahead and made the circuit, but I just wanted to look real quick about at this chip. And this is the CD4066B. I should probably write that up top here. Uh, just in case anyone was confused. Uh, so. So the CD4066B, let's talk a little bit about what this does. So I've just drawn a few of the pins here uh, so I can sort of explain it simply. But basically, it has uh, several input and output uh, signal lines. And I've just drawn one of them here, A. So we have, we have the A in and out over here. So these are both in, out. Oh, it's hard to read, but those are both in and out. And then we have an enable pin. So current can travel either either way between these pins when enable is pulled high. So if enable is is pulled to the same voltage as VDD, then current can flow between these pins. If enable is pulled down to VSS or ground, then the resistance between these pins goes very, very high and current cannot flow between them. So, uh, as opposed to a MOSFET, and a MOSFET, uh, 
as I'm sure you know, it has a body diode. Uh, so something like that. So, so the MOSFET will allow current to flow in this direction always, even when it's turned off. So, so it's not good for something like an audio signal where you have positive and negative voltage. So if this is zero volts, an audio signal might go high and then it might go low and, and this is the frequency, you know? So, so that's how it generates a, a sound that you can hear. So this wouldn't be good for that because it would only block the current flow in one direction. So it might only block this part, but it will still allow current to flow during these parts of the sine wave. So uh, that's why you can't just use a normal MOSFET. You have to use a chip like a like this one, which is a CMOS quad bilateral chip. And um, as far as I understand, the the bilateral part is the part that's important here. Quad just means it has four of these, so it, it has signal A, signal B, signal C, and signal D. So it can control four different signals. Uh, we only need two because we need left and right audio. Uh, well, actually, no. We let's go back to this. So uh, we don't really need to think about the whole schematic right now, but we actually need four channels. So we do need to use all four because we need two for the TV input and two for the Bluetooth input, and then those will connect together on the output and go to the speakers. Uh, and then we'll only we'll make sure that only one of those is on at any given moment. So one of my concerns for this was that uh, let's go ahead and get the the circuit in here. I've only I've connected up one to keep it simple. So one of my concerns for this was that it has a pretty high on resistance, uh, around 100 ohms, and that could be a problem for driving headphones from a phone, for instance, where you'll just get really quiet audio. Uh, so I wanted to just make sure that it'll work. It's not as big of a deal for speakers where you can just kind of turn the volume up a little bit and the amplifier will take care of that. Uh, so in my application, I was pretty sure that this would work, but for portable, maybe driving headphones, this may not be the best solution, uh, the, this chip. So uh, let's go ahead and look at how it's connected. So I have these two 3.5 millimeter jacks here, and I have the middle pin on both of them. I'm only doing one channel. Again, I'm just testing, so I'm not doing left, right. I'm just doing like left or, or right. I'm not sure which it is. So, so I'm going to be, my goal here is to get audio to go into this and then out this one. And then I should be able to put the enable pin to ground and that'll mute it. Or I should be able to put it to VCC and that will uh, turn it on. I'll be able to hear things. So, so the middle pin is connected to the first pin on this chip, which as we can see here is the signal A in and out. Then the second pin is also signal A in and out, so it's bi-directional, it can go either way. And so the audio signal will go through, it'll go into the chip, then it'll come back out, and it'll come down, and it'll go to this audio jack right down here. Uh, okay, so then I have the chip connected to, to, to power, that's this one is, is VCC, and this is VSS down here. Then this is the enable pin for channel A. So by putting this to ground, it should mute it. And by putting it to the 5 volt rail here, ooh, it should pull it high. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And I have a 12 volt adapter here. Oh, where is it? There it is. OK. So I have a 12 volt adapter here. And this is where we find out if I did something wrong. And it all goes up in smoke. We'll have to see. All right, that's good. Okay, so everything's live now. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to my laptop. And, oh, I don't have any music ready, just a moment. Okay, so I have some music prepared. Let's go ahead and connect my headphones so we have the audio we have the audio going into the bottom one and the headphones coming out of the top one. I could reverse those and theoretically it would work just the same. 
So these are my headphones, and hopefully you'll be able to hear the audio coming out of here. Actually, no, hopefully you won't, because the enable pin is tied to ground. So that should be muting it. So I'm going to go ahead and play, and, yep, cannot hear anything. So now I'm just going to pull this out, and just connect it to ground here. Oh, yep. Okay, so you can probably hear that. I'm gonna pull that out again, and I'm just gonna touch it to ground. Sure enough. That seems to have mostly muted it, although I still can hear some of the bass coming through. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I'll have to look into that, whether that's actually gonna be an issue or not. It probably won't be, but it possibly could. So, uh, that's the first look at this chip, and there's going to be some more videos coming on this. Eventually it will go on to a prototyping board and it'll look much nicer as a finished product. One problem that I've noticed though is that these, uh, these 3.5mm adap adapters, uh, I thought that they were uh, 3 channel because they have, <laughs> or sorry, 2 channel because they have 3 connectors, one for ground and one for each channel, but as you can see, it's kind of nice that it's transparent. It this doesn't actually touch that last contact, so uh, these lot these two end contacts are purely just for detecting when something's plugged in, because they're shorted together when it's unplugged and not when it's plugged in. So I need to buy some different connectors that are two channel, uh, two channel connectors. So. Not a big deal though, I can order those and they'll be here soon and we'll be ready to go. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I actually wanted to do a quick addendum here. Uh, I wanted to actually look at the on resistance. So right now we're seeing, oh, is this, what's going on here? We're seeing about 50 mega ohms. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Uh, 50 mega ohms in the off state. Let's go ahead and pull that out. And now it's floating, so it's not predictable. And in the on state, we're getting about 80 ohms. So that's quite high resistance for an audio signal. But again, like I said before, it shouldn't matter too much in this situation because we'll have an amplifier on one end and we can just boost it back up. No worries.